And now a new independent film opening this weekend spotlights a community not often seen in cinema and is racking up the accolades. Jeffrey Brown has the story. Okay, I warned you, one drip and you're out. Oh, come on! Out now. It's gonna melt outside. It's melting inside, too. The Florida Project follows a rebellious little girl named Mooney and her friends over one mischief-making summer outside Orlando. These are the rooms we're not supposed to go in. But let's go anyway. But this is not the Orlando of Disney World's Magic Kingdom. Instead, Mooney and her young single mother live in a rundown motel called the Magic Castle. It's only second week of the summer and there's already been a dead fish in the pool. I failed as a mother, Mooney. You disgraced me. Hurley. Yeah, Mom, you're a disgrace. I would say it's like the Little Rascals 2017 in many ways. Independent filmmaker Sean Baker co-wrote and directed The Florida Project. My whole career has been inspired and influenced by the Little Rascals. I think it's because they used to play in syndication uh, on local New York television. So I would come home from school and see these episodes two or three f after school every day, and they just stuck with me. Alfalfa, did you brush your teeth? Yep, both of them. The Little Rascals was a series of shorts that first debuted in 1922 as part of the silent film era. In the 50s, they were repackaged for television, following a band of children, Spanky, Alfalfa, Buckwheat, and others, always seeking out a new thrill and finding lots of trouble along the way. They were set against the Great Depression. Lots of the characters in The Little Rascals were actually living in poverty, but they never focused on that. They focused on the, the universal traits of children, you know, and, and I thought that was beautiful. In similar fashion, the Florida Project is told through the eyes of children, but shows a community living on the margins. If you're working, who's looking after money? You're not my father. I don't want to be your you father. You can't treat me like this. A young mother struggling to pay rent and care for a daughter who's free to roam the parking lots, abandoned homes, and the swamp around the motel. Always a stone's throw from Disney's gilded wonderland. Excuse me, miss. Could you give us some change, please? We need to yes. buy ice cream. And um, the doctor said we have asthma and we gotta eat ice cream yeah. right away. Yeah. It's not what audiences often see in theaters today, either in subject matter or story structure, and can feel almost like a documentary. There is a story. I mean, you know, we're used to Hollywood filmmaking it almost uh, insists that we have a three-act structure and character arcs, this and that. We tried to break that a little bit by just, we want the audience to feel as if they're actually spending the summer with Mooney. So summers aren't exactly plot-driven, you know. Um, we eventually do get there, and there's uh, an unfortunate inevitability that we're leading towards. But if there is a plot, it's disguised. If there are act breaks, they're blurry, the lines are blurred. I will go with you under one condition. You must promise me that there's not gonna be any drama. I promise, I promise. The 46-year-old Baker first gained attention for his 2015 film, Tangerine, about a transgender sex worker upset that her pimp and boyfriend has been cheating on her. Much was made of how Baker shot it on an iPhone 5S. And it was another film set against a fantasy world backdrop, Hollywood, with a community living on the margins. I think I'm drawn towards underrepresented stories, underrepresented communities and, and subcultures. It's my response to what I'm not seeing in U.S. cinema. But I don't think it was a, so much of a conscious thing. It was more of like, I, I feel that these stories should be told because I want to know more about it. It, it, it gives me the opportunity to, to learn more about um, other people. This time, Baker shot on 35 millimeter film and cast a big supporting name in Willem Dafoe as the motel manager. He found one of his leads, Bria Venita, through social media. He thought she looked the part. She'd never acted before. That made the seven-year-old Brooklyn Prince, who had done some acting, the veteran. So I would be a little bit nervous, but Sean and Willem, Brooklyn, everyone on set, just always made me feel really confident and comfortable. And because of them, I just felt like I had the confidence to do it. Did you, once you got to know each other, did you sort of feel like you were creating the scenes yourselves? Yeah. It felt like we didn't even 
like need to be an actor. We just went we're ourselves the whole movie. And Sean was very honest about improvising. He's like, let's stick with this line, or that's a good line, but um, maybe we should do um, this word instead of this word. And it would be just really fun. We could mix up. It's like another world. <laughs> I really love mixing it up. I love uh, combining seasoned actors with first timers and with non-professionals. Those are three different groups. And, and what happens, it's a strange, wonderful alchemy. And yet inside that sense of spontaneity are very real issues Baker wanted to tackle. Uh, using that the term, you know, hidden homeless might scare some audience members away. They might think this is gonna be a heavy handed uh, you know, very melodramatic film. It's actually quite a digestible one because what we're trying to do is have audiences uh, hopefully, you know, embrace and love little Mooney. So, but at the end of the night when they're going home, they're thinking about the real Moonies who are living in this situation. From Washington, I'm Jeffrey Brown for the PBS NewsHour.